Helmets are awesome. A helmet is cool for the same reasons that a car is cool. It's a beautiful thing that has a job. When F1 drivers unveil their helmet, it's almost as big as when they unveil their car. It's as iconic as a leather jacket. Technically, they're both safety equipment, but they look badass. Darth Vader in a helmet is the most iconic, scariest villain in cinematic history. But then you take it off and he looks like your toe after a long bath. Ugh. As cool as they are, helmets exist to keep our heads from exploding when they hit things. Ha! This is cars down to the atom. Science! <laughs> the first helmets were leather, and they were more about keeping your head warm and protecting your ears from noise, which I guess is better than nothing. But in 1956, Pete Snell died in a racing accident. And his buddy, George Snively Jr., was like, dang, I miss Pete. I just wish there was something he could have put on his head that was harder than my jacket, my couch, or my shoes. Snively incorporated the Snell Memorial Foundation in 1958 and published the first Snell safety standards for protective headgear. They smack them on machines! They hit them on anvils! And they burn them with torches like a Frankenstein monster! So this one claims that it meets Department of Transportation standards. Technically, it's illegal to put dot on a helmet unless it meets their standards, but as far as we can find, it's kind of like an honor code. Snell on a helmet, that's the Snell Foundation telling you they tested this helmet and it meets their standards. A Snell approved helmet is tested by the Snell Foundation. I guarantee it. So Bart, how does a helmet work? Pretty well, James, pretty well. Now you may have heard someone say that a helmet absorbs impact. Physics tells us that energy can't be destroyed or created. So in the helmet biz, they say managed. The helmet has to take the energy of an impact and manage it by spreading it out so it doesn't hurt you. The energy of the impact has to be distributed through a number of layers of different materials so that it doesn't get distributed into your skull. The better the materials are, the better the energy management is. The hard stuff manages the impact, the soft stuff cushions your head. Armadillo, armapillo. <laughs> All right, let's do some science stuff. This is my friend Brian. He's going through a divorce, just bought a motorcycle, and decided to cheap out and get a discount helmet online. Brian's like, hey, I got this bike. I need to get a helmet. 40 bucks, I'm legal. Colin spent 400 bucks and got a medium grade helmet. All right, bear with me. I haven't done this in a while. This is a shock pad. It's designed to burst when it experiences 75 Gs of force. Government scientists say that if you experience 75 Gs of force, you're gonna be severely injured or dead. Here goes Brian in the $40 helmet. Good luck, Brian. And now Colin in the more expensive helmet. Good luck, Colin. Let's see how my buddy Brian did in his $40 helmet. Oh, Jesus, Brian. You feeling okay, huh? How are you? Oh, Brian, you've experienced over 75 Gs, and I don't know how to tell you this, buddy. No, you'll be fine, don't worry. We'll get you some help. He cracked his melon. All right, now let's see how Colin did. Hey, buddy, you hear about Brian? He didn't make it. Colin's fine. And look at this, guys. The shock watch didn't burst. That means this helmet kept it under 75 Gs on his head. That means Colin's not severely injured. That's pretty cool. I mean, this is a melon. Both helmets look the same on the outside. So the answer must be on the inside. Ow. Yeah. So let's find out what's on the inside. <laughs> this helmet smells bad. Like, stuff was melting. That's not good. Let's crack her open. What in the... It's just one solid piece. It's got a, a weird lining. It's got packing tape. And now, the more expensive helmet. <laughs> Whew. Look, this is Princess Leia's helmet when she's on Endor. Dude. That's totally how that happened. It's pretty obvious that the more expensive helmet is better in this case. The shell is thin, and it's just made of plastic. It even melted under the grinder, where the Snell helmet has a proprietary thick liner 
This inexpensive helmet has a foam. It's much less dense, and I couldn't tell you what it's made of. I can tell you that it also melted under the grinder. If you're in a car accident, you don't want stuff melting to your head. If you look at the more expensive Snell certified helmet, it's really easy to see why it was so effective. First, the diamond blade made a nice clean cut. Nothing in here melted, and that's a good sign. This shell is a thick, layered, fiberglass composite with a fire retardant resin and enamel coating. And beneath that is this two-tiered bead-all liner. These things together are what saved Collins Mellon. The visor is a three millimeter thick piece of Kevlar. That's the stuff in bulletproof windows. Helmets started as glorified winter racing hats made out of cow's butt skin. But over the years, they've evolved into these well thought out high tech lifesavers. You can see the difference between a more expensive certified helmet and a budget helmet. So wear a good helmet like a good car boy. Thanks for watching Science Garage. I had a great, great time cutting these helmets open. This was one of your ideas, so thanks. Give me some more ideas about stuff you think I should cut open or blow up or I don't know, drink. Follow Donut on Instagram at donut.media. If you're thinking about getting into racing, check out Tony's video on the best tuner cars under 10 grand. You want to know more about helmets? Check out this video we did on the evolution of racing helmets. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Check back every Wednesday to learn more science. Don't tell my wife I did this. Bye, guys.